Hello my friends, my name is Elon Osborne and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And today I'll be going over the new Platin Monaco 5.1.2 wireless home theater system with WISA technology. For more in-depth rundown of the specs and what's inside the box, check out my review of its almost identical predecessor, the Monaco 5.1 system, here. There's also a link in the description for more information on all the current Platin audio surround sound systems available to you. You're welcome. Now, the brains of the operation is still the Weiss's sound set. This hockey puck of a wireless transmitter easily connects to your TV via optical or HDMI, just the same as hooking up a soundbar. The sound set has supported Dolby Atmos codecs ever since the OG Monaco 5.1 system came out, but you would have to purchase an additional pair of satellite speakers to then mount up high if you wanted true height channels. But this system now has upward firing Atmos speakers built into the front left and right speakers. And let's not forget that these speakers are labeled with their specific locations that they need to go. This one, for example, says FR, FRH, meaning front right, front right height. So for the best and easiest setup, make sure to place these speakers accordingly. Now, unfortunately, the sound send can only support up to eight channels of wirelessly transmitted audio. So having five main speakers plus one subwoofer plus two height channels adds up to eight right there, maxing out the number it can support. So you wouldn't just be able to purchase two additional satellites and have a 5.1.4 system. Sorry. A small aesthetic update to the system is now all the speakers have removable magnetic grills. So now you have the choice of going stealth or grillless. One thing to note with how I set up the system, I did indeed place the subwoofer underneath my couch. Its low profile design is made to fit under most couches, and I honestly suggest doing that with this six inch downward firing driver, because it's not gonna be as powerful or earth shaking as your typical eight, 10, or 12 inch cubed subwoofer. So having it right under your butt is definitely the best use of its capabilities. I normally have a Sonos Beam and some SL1s connected in this living room, but having a subwoofer with the Monaco system definitely filled in those low rumblings quite nicely in comparison. Much more cinematic. And speaking of this living room, I had to review this system in here because in my shed theater, there are acoustic panels on the ceiling between the TV and the couch. So testing upward firing anything is out of the question. Another thing to note is that you want to immediately download the SoundSend app. Once I got all the speakers hooked up, turned on the TV, and fired up and or on Disney+, Plus, I couldn't hear anything. Huh. This may have been because I have reviewed both the Monaco and Milan systems in the past, so maybe it still thought I had those hooked up instead. So once I opened up the app, went to advanced settings, under speaker config, I noticed it was still on 5.1, so I changed it to 5.1.2, then went to scan for speakers. It was thinking for about 10 seconds or so, and then boom, I could hear sound coming out of the speakers. Yay. But I still do appreciate all you can do within the app from trimming the specific output of individual speakers, EQing highs, mids, vocals, mid bass, and subwoofer outputs, dialing in the distances between you and the speakers, etc. Not all listening spaces are the same, so I like being able to customize like that. How do they sound? Now, if you've seen me talk about upward firing speakers in the past, you know that I'm not the biggest fan. But I completely understand that a lot of you out there can't mount anything up high in or on the ceiling, so upward firing is the only choice you have for any Atmos experience whatsoever. Now, these ceilings are eight feet high, which I think is most ideal for upward firing. Not too short, not too tall, but even then Atmos effects weren't really giving me any kind of wow factor with this system. But one really cool thing you can do in the SoundSend app is to go to speaker settings, tap on the button that says action, which brings up a list, then tap on release. That essentially disconnects the speakers from the system, which is great for testing purposes like this. So I released every speaker, but the two height channels so I could hear only Atmos effects and nothing else. When sitting on the couch like normal, a sense of sound coming from above just wasn't noticeable. I could hear the direct sounds coming from the top of those speakers just fine, but anything off the ceiling? Yeah, not really. Although even from the couch, having sound emanating from the top speakers did make it seem like sound was coming from the top of the TV, which is better than everything seeming to be coming from below the TV. So to try and get to the bottom of this situation, I just happened to have a laser pointer on hand, so I got that, lined it up with the center of the upward firing driver, and noticed that the angle at which the speaker fires audio is fairly straight. The speakers themselves are about one foot from the wall, and the laser beam on the ceiling was only about two feet from the wall. That's 
that's a pretty steep angle. So I moved the coffee table and proceeded to move myself forward, sitting in a manner that closely resembles where my head would be if I were sitting on the couch. Well, it turns out when the height effects did kick in, it actually sounded as if they were bouncing off the ceiling when I was about six feet away from the TV. So just to recap the math here, with the angle of these speakers bouncing audio off an eight foot ceiling, sitting six feet away from the TV is the sweet spot. Although that might be too close for comfort for some of you out there. That's also with the trim level of the height speakers turned up to five, which is the max. But the only caveat was that was a specific spot that I kept rewinding over and over during the animated movie Klaus on Netflix because it was a rather loud effect. But the other moments where Atmos effects kicked in were rather atmospheric. Subtle environmental sounds like wind, rain, seagull squawking in the distance, those still didn't bounce off the ceiling all that much due to the nature of those sounds being so subtle. So even though it's cool that these upward firing speakers are built in with the system, I'd still rather have separate speakers mounted up high. But again, I understand that's just not possible with some of you. Because upward firing speakers are better than nothing, and they still do add dimension to the overall soundstage, I will admit that. But speaking of the overall soundstage, let's talk about the system as a whole. First of all, just like its predecessor, the Monaco 5.1.2 is tuned by THX. I don't know exactly what that means, but the fact that THX engineers had their hands on these speakers at all is better than not at all. Right? So that's cool. The other thing to note is that despite these speakers being housed in a very sturdy and sleek MDF cabinet, the woofers are still three inches in diameter. Three inch woofers seem to be standard size these days when it comes to soundbars in general. So the overall pound for pound sound quality is about on par with a higher end soundbar, like one that's between $1,000 and $1,500. Although one major difference is that the front soundstage is not contained within one housing. You can make a soundstage as narrow or as wide as you want. I enjoy having my left and right speakers on the sides of my TV instead of below. So that's a huge plus in my book. Although my one complaint about the center speaker is that it's just a little too tall in some instances. For example, my wife and I watch almost everything with subtitles nowadays when the kids go to bed so we don't have to have it up so loud just to understand the dialogue. But depending on what we're watching, the subtitles can be slightly obstructed from view. My Sonos Beam didn't have that problem since it's not as tall. So with this system, just make sure your TV is slightly elevated or mounted if you often watch content with subtitles. With the front left and right speakers flanking my TV though, the sound stage is wide and immersive. And because the front left and right speakers are wide, dialogue is outstanding and intelligible. With the whole system running, I am right in the center of the action. And having that subwoofer underneath the couch is icing on the cake. One downside though is that since it's like having a soundbar, having all the audio being processed done inside the little tiny sound send puck, it did seem to get a little overwhelmed when the action picked up. As I mentioned, we were watching Klaus as a family and there were times during action packed scenes where dialogue kind of got lost in the mix and slightly drowned out compared to the quiet scenes with just characters talking to one another. I've experienced that many a time with soundbars and wireless systems alike contained within a tiny little footprint. Dialogue, sound effects, music, bass response, etc. It's a lot to handle. But action scenes aside, I do think the overall sound quality was an improvement over the Sonos Beam when it came to TV and movies. Just a little wider with the left and right speakers flanking the TV, the overall scale being larger with those upward firing speakers, etc. Recap. So who is this system for? Well, just remember that even though it is a wireless system, meaning you don't have to snake several speaker wires from a receiver, you still need a power outlet to plug each speaker into. The front soundstage alone requires four outlets, front left, center, front right, and the sound send itself. So this system is for those who want the easy setup of a sound bar, but don't want the limiting constraints of having sound coming from a single bar. I know a lot of sound bars nowadays have upward firing speakers built in, but then that means the sound is needing to travel even further to hit the ceiling since the bar is most likely under the TV. At least with the Monaco system, since the front left and right speakers are on stands, the distance between the speaker and the ceiling is about two feet less, so that will get you a better bounce effect than most sound bars. And as far as placement and aesthetics, I still recommend this system if you have some nice built-ins flanking your TV. That way you can 
hide the power cables better. But even if you don't, there are still ways to hide power cables behind the speaker stands or get some cable concealer kits, etc. And even though the subwoofer isn't going to knock your socks off, it does add a cinematic feel to it all, giving you that sweet low rumble that sound bars alone just can't do. And there you have it. Thank you for joining me on this review of the Platinum Monaco 5.1.2 system. Have you been needing a system like this because you want the easy setup of a soundbar but need the flexibility of placing the front soundstage how you like it? Are you not allowed to mount speakers up high so you need upward firing speakers to get into Dolby Atmos for the first time? Let's start a conversation, people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies wirelessly through your Platinum Monaco 5.1.2 system experience them. And of course, always be listening.